ethics as it's applied to nursing. New and progressive technology brings up new ethical and moral issues regarding the creation of life, prolonging of life, curing of chronic diseases, ensuring a peaceful death, and ending life. Ethical issues continue to arise as research discovers new methods, possibilities, and procedures, and as people continue to push for the right to make their own decisions. Right or wrong, nurses are seen as an authority on ethical issues because they are medical professionals. Law is considered the minimum ethic that is written and enforced. Now the Nurse Practice Act, again, is the final authority on the nurse's legal obligations. A person's ethics or morals are subject to change throughout their lifetime. The teen years, for example, are a time of trying out family values and either incorporating them or rejecting them and replacing them with new values. Nursing ethics, though, goes beyond the legal implications outlined in the Nurse Practice Act. It deals with the relationship of the nurse to the patient, families, associates, or other nurses and society. A nurse may disagree with a patient's beliefs and lifestyles, but nothing should interfere with a nurse's belief in providing good nursing care for all of his or her patients. The NAPNES code and the NFLPN codes are located in the appendices of your book. The Nurse Practice Act, again, is going to differ from state to state, so it is so important to understand those in the state in which the nurse holds a license to practice. Your personal code of ethics is going to provide your personal guidelines for living. Do not confuse your personal ethics with nursing ethics because you cannot refuse to care for any patient, irregardless of their disease process, etc. If you do object to a medical procedure on religious or moral grounds, make sure that you do put it in writing, but you cannot refuse to care for any patient. Nursing ethics was primarily a modification of medical ethics and ethics of other professions that were in existence at that time. It's important to know the past to be able to understand the difference the changes have made and pursue additional changes and improvements in the future. Nursing textbooks and curricula both have had to change to reflect nursing process, critical thinking, and to focus on the total patient, not just the diseased portion of the patient. Usually the discussions relate to new or unusual ethical questions in an ethics committee. Patients will arrive with their cultural and or their religion based ethics. What the person can or cannot do in regard to their health care has already been established by the culture of which they're a part. Ethical issues in nursing are more frequently encountered due to advances in life prolonging technology. An individual's right has become a central theme of health care. There's the right to consent to care, the right to choose between alternative treatments, women's rights over their own bodies, the right to consent to or refuse treatment. The Western secular belief system has also contributed to the introduction of principles that revolve around personal choice in determining life and death and end-of-life issues. So looking at ethical and legal responsibilities, we look at patient advocacy. The patient needs to be informed of what you will be doing with him or her. For example, the steps of a procedure. Accountability you are answerable to yourself, to your assigned patient, to the team leader, to the physician, and to your instructor who evaluates your work. 
and peer reporting. It's necessary to report peers for behaviors that are potentially harmful to patients. The big question is, to what extent do one's individual moral decisions or rights get in the way of another's moral autonomy? Final ethical decisions are outside the scope of practice of the practical nurse. Remember, ethics is what you ought to do, and the law is what you have to do. Learning about ethics is more than being able to recite the definition to pass a test. It means being able to help make ethical decisions when ethical dilemmas arise. Non-maleficence is often a difficult principle to strictly adhere to. This is because healthcare professionals could be required to perform something perceived as harmful during the process of improving a patient's condition. The common belief in nursing should be that the patient's needs come first, before the nurse's personal or professional needs of the moment. Administrative or paperwork requirements, although inconvenient, can wait until the patient's needs have been met. In order to make an autonomous decision, the individual must have all of the facts, but that does not mean that a client can do whatever he or she wants. A patient's right to privacy means that they can choose care based on their personal beliefs. They can accept or reject treatment and avoid needless exposure. Personal values, though, may be contrary to medical ethics. A patient can refuse care for religious, cultural, or personal reasons. Many nurses find fidelity to be extremely frustrating at times, especially when family members challenge medical opinions. Talking to a nursing colleague or supervisor may help the nurse maintain perspective. Treating each patient with justice will enable the nurse to minimize psychological stress. This is because the nurse can feel confident that he or she has provided the best patient care possible. <clears throat> Beneficent paternalism is another way of stating, I know what's best for you. <coughs> Excuse me, the paternalism comes from the parental side. It's encouraging a client to follow a care plan that he developed is beneficence, but influencing a client to choose one treatment over another is paternalistic beneficence. Historically, it was believed that men knew better than women, so physicians dis defined what was normal. Anything that is normally different from men is considered an illness and requires the physician's intervention. And since women are different from men biologically, medicine has defined what is normal for women as being abnormal. Women were seen as victims of their own bodies who could not help being sick. But in today's world, our responsibility is to advocate for our female patient. <laughs>